Well, hello there. And welcome back. If you're new here, my name is Rusty, and this is my channel where I talk about my favorite movies, mostly horror, my favorite music, mostly metal, and we are con going to continue the Cold Prey trilogy with Cold Prey 2. Now, Cold Prey 2, like Halloween 2, in more ways than one, is a direct, immediate sequel, meaning that it takes place, ex you know, exactly after the first one. Same day. Immediately after the first one ends, this one begins. Doesn't she look like Sigourney Weaver? On the cover there, that's Yannicka from the first one. And Cold Prey 2 was released in 2008, writ directed by Matt Steenberg, written by Thomas Molstad, stars the same girl Ingrid Bolsa Berdai, Martha Rovick, and Kim Hagen, amongst others. And yeah, so. my screensaver up and let's get into this thing so as I said Cold Prey 2 starts immediately after the first one ended we open in a hospital where we meet Camilla who is a doctor um, she is the understudy of the other doctor who works there named Dr. Herman Herman and um, yeah, we're introduced to her. She has a, a boyfriend named Ole. And Ole uh, shows up to meet her after work that day and picks her up. And they are talking about how she's going to move to Oslo. And um, he's not very happy about that because he likes his mountain job he is a rescuer he is a um, you know investigator and I guess he's not an EMT he's more like a mountain rescue guy so you know that's uh, they have this little tension between them but it doesn't really amount to anything so while they're together in the auto he gets a call about an abandoned car that has been found at the base of the mountain. Now we know that that car is Yannicka and her friends. So he drops her back off at the ho at hospital and he goes to check out this abandoned car. Um, he gets there, he finds it, he says well it looks like it's been here for a few days. He radios it back in and then um, on his way back after making his report, he almost hits Yannicka in the road. She is standing in the middle of the road, just like we saw her from the last movie, with a pickaxe in her hand. And he swerves and re uh, nearly wrecks and sees her in the rear view. And then he watches her turn around and look at him days confused and crazed and you know uh, she falls down and passes out he jumps out and gets her and he takes her to the hospital he takes her to the hospital and we then see her in the hospital bed she's been you know pumped full of she's been warmed up treated for hypothermia um, and we we see some Double cops sitting around her bed along with Dr. Herman Camilla and um, she's basically told them the story now the sheriff and the cops they are very very skeptical they don't really believe you know what she has said but unlike probably in America 
they actually go well whether we believe her or not we're certainly going to go check it out so what is it I think Ole goes as well as I think three tree of cops they go and the sheriff they go up there to the lodge to check it out and um, Camilla ends up trying to talk to you know because they're like Dr. Herman you know is like well you know why don't you try to talk to her and see if you can get more out of her um, because nobody really knows what to think is she crazy um, you know so she tries to talk to her and that doesn't go completely well um, but she develops an affinity for her she's obviously been extremely traumatized which we all know to be completely true because we are probably you would probably be traumatized yourself just watching that damn movie it was so good but um, so the cops radio back that it's all true they found the bodies in the ravine and they found the killer in the ravine and they get them you know they go down there and they recover the bodies including the killer and bring them back to the morgue which is in the hospital so Yannicka is in a room and they bring the five bodies, the, her four friends and the killer, back to the morgue, which happens to be in the same hospital that she's in. So you have a lot of scenes. You get to know the nurse. Um, and you get to know a couple of the cops that are pretty cool. And, of course, the sheriff. He is feeling a little weird about everything because after she told him the story one of the things that she mentioned was the face birthmark facial birthmark which he acted very strange about and he he actually left he left um, this guy to watch over her sent the other two cops to the hotel to check it out instead of letting them come back home and um, Ole never comes back. He is on his way back, but he never makes it. So, or at this time, he doesn't. So, the sheriff goes back and gets out all of his files. Of his, uh, You see him getting out of his files of these missing person cases. And he starts putting them all up on his little investigatory board where he is um, sort of putting it together in his head this killer hundred people have disappeared in the mountain in the last 30 years you know because this is 2006 um, in the movie time it's 2006 and this boy disappeared in 75 with the facial birthmark so he's putting it all together he doesn't really want to believe it but he thinks there's something really suspicious he's watching the interviews with the parents all this kind of stuff and gets a he, you know he gets the same funny feeling that he had had back then about it because they all assumed the boy had been killed in an avalanche even though, you know, that's why he was never found. But he's sort of putting it together that something else is going on here. And basically, he, he's starting to put together what we know to be the truth. And that is that this killer has been killing. He's the reason for all of these disappearances. So, um... I'm trying to find the nurse's name. 
all all healed all it all healed man i can't do de danish names that's for sure i'll just call her odd but odd um you know we get to know her and the cop that is guarding yannicka is getting kind of you know close with her and likes her and they like each other so they end up camilla has to end up going in there and telling yannicka that they have brought the bodies of her friends and um, thinks that it would be helpful. I'm not really sure how I would handle that, but she thinks that it would be helpful. You know, she asked her, do you want to go and see them? And that's a very intense scene because time-wise, this happened the last couple of days and she is having to look at their bodies and it breaks her heart. It, she's very traumatized. She has to look at Eric, her boyfriend. And then she really, when she sees, because remember, the one that she did not see was um, Morton. Remember, she didn't get to see him. She didn't know, she didn't know what happened to him. Um, because he made her run when they had him trapped in the basement and so all she knows was that you know what happened in the last movie that she was knocked out on the skis and woke up on the sled with him going to dump the bodies so she didn't get to really see much I mean this body was just laying on top of her she didn't see it so that was the hardest part of that scene was when she got to him and she saw and we saw because we didn't see what he done to him either we knew he was you know killed but we didn't get to see the aftermath like a lingering shot on the body and that really broke her uh, to see him because this is what was done to him for her to escape so that really hurt her and uh, it was a it was a very emotional and really cool scene as they're creating this atmosphere then she sees the killer's body laying over there bad idea she flips out runs over there jumps on top of it starts you know beating it and stuff like that now Camilla kind of knows that well that's to be expected it's not like that's like a sign of insanity or anything I mean most any of us would do that but Dr. Herman who is kind of a dick um, he's not a super dick but he's a dick uh, he like wants her put on a bunch of sedatives and stuff like that to knock her out you know so they sedate her take her back to the room where this idiot cop well actually oh well I'll take that back I'm glad he didn't like handcuff her to the bed or anything but he did tie her hands and her feet with that super strong um, I guess it's what they wrap muscles with like if you have a sprained muscle you know so he had tied her hands and her feet to the bed and she had been sedated because of the way she behaved in there. And we end up getting to see um, that the killer, when Nurse Odd starts undressing him, and like she had, you know, was do had done the other bodies, she starts ripping something off of his chest and he actually moves which scares the shit out of her and you watching the movie and he starts coming back to life now Yannicka had woken up no they hadn't tied her to the bed yet um Yannicka had woken up and had went out into the hall and had seen them running with the crash cart if you know what that is the crash cart to bring somebody back 
the the paddles and all of that and she goes down there and sees them trying to revive this thing and she starts screaming don't do that <laughs> bad idea there <laughs> and uh, she goes in there and just attacks them all she bloodies the cops nose uh, trying to stop it but of course they get her down and that's when they take her and tie her to the bed um, but they do they they revive him and put him on you know so they've got him on the oxygen mask and uh, stuff like that now he does have handcuffs to the thing which is why the cop I just thought of that that's why the cop had to use gauze to tie her down on the bed is because he used his handcuffs on the killer there you go just answered a question there but um so the cop kind of flirts with the nurse and um they are left you know alone in there with the, the body uh the cop is now instead of guarding her well why would he you know she's tied to the bed so he is guarding the killer and they flirt uh, the cop and the nurse the nurse then you know is like yeah we'll go out on a date and whatever and she leaves and goes to the locker room to take a shower and get dressed and go home and in that time the killer sits up grabs he doesn't just that was a good kill because he doesn't just grab one scalpel from this stack of medical instruments he just grabs a handful so there's like seven or eight sharp scalpels and picks and stuff you know from the thing and he sits up behind that guy and just cuts his throat it was a it's a good kill that's a good kill um, he breaks the handcuffs he gets out and now he's here he is loose again total Halloween too and he finds the nurse we have this long kill scene where he ends up like knocking her out with a fire extinguisher um, and then he that and that just shows how evil he is is that he didn't go ahead and kill her he waited for her to come to to then smash her head in with the fire extinguisher it's like you know I guess it wouldn't be any fun for him to kill her when she was unconscious he wanted her to wake up <laughs> and then kill her I guess he wants them to see it coming or something so that was a good you know kill scene and um, Jan wakes up Janneke wakes up again and uh, she hears you know banging and gets up which is how I should have known it was a nightmare because she gets up and she goes out there and sees weird stuff in the window at the end of the hall and all of a sudden the killers there's a good scene though it's really scary and um, it turns out it was a nightmare so she wakes up for real and this is when she discovers that she's tied to the bed of course the lights have went out and the other dr. Herman he had was went down to the basement to try to figure out you know why the lights were out and um, so Camilla dr. Camilla she ends up going down the hall and finding the nurse's purse and jacket in the middle of the hall and goes looking for her so you've got Herman down there in the basement you've got her having found this she goes to the locker room looking for for the nurse and finds her body so now this movie cranks right this this cranks because once everybody knows the shit is hit the fan that's when the movie goes into high speed it was the same way with the first one you had this really good developmental period and then the movie goes into high speed so Herman does find out 
why the power was cut, it looks like somebody did what? Raked a pickaxe through the wires. So he turns on the generator, but which um, allows the lights to come on, but only for a short moment, just long enough for Camilla to get a really good look at what she thinks is the body of the nurse over there because it's dark, kind of darkish. But the lights come on full force, giving her and us the full picture of the nurse being smashed, her head smashed against the wall uh, from the fire extinguisher. Then we get Herman's kill, the doctor down there in the basement. He is attacked and chased. Um, you t I swear I keep wanting to say Michael, you know, because it is so Halloween too. Um, but sort of like on a steroids. I, I find this a whole lot more scary as the best hospital kill movie because Halloween 2 only a you know a certain part of it takes place in the hospital whereas this one it's all in the hospital all of it the whole movie so except for those little times that I told you about so now that um, we're down there with Herman's kill scene that is an, that's a very unique kill too. He is basically caught at the top of the stairs. And the killer, I haven't been using his name. I know the killer's name. But the killer grabbed him by the head, by the hair, you know, and, and then grabbed a hold of his head. And he actually pulls his head down to his back back here. Um, and they show you that from like above, you know, him pulling the head back. That was ugly. You know what I mean? That was an ugly kill. Very unique. Very interesting. Um, so you still have Yannicka's tied up. But she knows something's going on. The lights are off. Things are going down. Um, we then see the sheriff. Because in the meantime, you've had these small short scenes of the sheriff doing his little investigation into his theory that this is actually the kid that disappeared in 75. And he goes and sees um, the doctor who actually knew the family. And the doctor tells him an interesting story, and that is that, and we also learn his name, you know, and, and that is the killer's name is Gunner. So, um, I call him Gun, in all my notes he's just called Gun. But uh, the sheriff learns more about Gun's backstory. And that is, for example, one of the things uh, was that he was actually stillborn. And um, they thought he was dead. And he actually laid in the crib at the, at the birth for four hours. They had written up a death certificate and everything. Uh, when after four hours, all of a sudden, he just opened his eyes and woke up. The baby just opened his eyes and woke up scared them all to death and he didn't even cry or anything he just woke up like everything was cool this this stillborn baby just woke up so that's when you get I get there could possibly be something supernatural but it's actually not it, it's more like that he just has this genetic ability to hibernate kind of like instead of dying he's just really he's just fucking hard to kill okay <laughs> is basically what it does and that's how he was able to be picked up in that glacier and brought back to to hospital 
and revive after laying there in the morgue for all that time because it was just like when he was a kid or when he was born as a baby. So the sheriff, like I said, he's, he's found out more of this stuff. Now there is a, this is a tourist town and it's off season. So that's why there are so few employees. And there's actually only two other people in the hospital besides Yannicka. And that is a little boy named Daniel who had broke his arm. And a really old lady, which you only see her once. She doesn't really take part in any of the movie. But um, Daniel comes into Yannicka's room. And that's her chance to escape because she knows shit's going down. So she tells the little boy to get some scissors or something to undo her. Because you can imagine, she's figured out something's going on. She knows they revived the killer. And she's tied to a bed. This is not acceptable <laughs> to me either. You know. So she knows that gun is loose. And... Um, so she takes Daniel and tries to get him out of the hospital. She hides him in this little cupboard while she goes and tries to make sure the coast is clear. Um, Camilla, in the meantime, has called Ole, her boyfriend, and told him, people are dead here. Um, help. Come help. Bring everyone <laughs> to help. Uh, so Yannicka almost kills Camilla when Camilla comes like around the corner and that's how they end up teaming up so they're going to go back and try to get Daniel and get him out of the hospital and themselves out of the hospital when Camilla of course has got to be a dick and goes to look for Herman. No, I've got to go and make sure that Herman is okay. You know, her her doctor uh, friend. So she goes down there while Yannicka goes to try to get um, a weapon or something to get Daniel out of there and get the hell out. She goes back to the cupboard, and Daniel is gone. So, um, Camilla ends up going back to uh, the morgue, because now he's after her. She found Herman, and the killer is after her. He almost kills her. But then Jan, Janneke ends up getting him off of her, and they take off, and her and Daniel get outside. So they run outside. Right as the sheriff and Ole, her boyfriend, and a couple of other those other cops, I know one of them's name was Kim, um, they show up. And Yannicka, of course, wants to go back inside because uh, she wants this guy dead, as you can imagine. There's a lot of Sigourney Weaver ba attitude in her, you know, wanting to take revenge for having killed all of her friends. The sheriff, of course, wants to be a dick, doesn't want her to go back in. She is taken and put into a cop car. And um, that is where her and Camilla and this cop is left to protect them while the sheriff and Ole and the other cops go into the hospital. We get a lot of good kill scenes out of that mistake. Um, we see all of Ole, we see Ole pulled off into a room. We see Kim in a pretty ugly death. Uh, we see the sheriff get killed as well. So you have the, you have no, nobody is left. Um, 
Yannicka keeps telling this cop, you have got to let me out of this fucking car. You don't understand. I cannot be in the back of this car. And um, that cop finally agrees, okay. You know, they saw the shooting up there at hospital in the windows. So they know stuff went down. Camilla's worried about her boyfriend. Yannicka is just like, you've got to let me go because obviously you fucks do not know what to do. You do not know exactly how important it is to kill this motherfucker. She also probably had a little bit of a, well, I know I would too. I tried to stop you people. What did you? What, what kind of maniac is going to revive this guy instead of letting him die? Why did you do that? So she's got a. I, th I think she's a little bitter <laughs> about more than one thing. Um, but that cop agrees. Okay, I'm gonna let you out. And he grabs his gun and he starts to open his door. When we get a very nice jump kill kill, jump scare kill, because whoosh, just like that, there's a pickaxe through his head, because gun's outside, and he has pushed this pickaxe right through his head, blood goes all over Camilla, Yannicka is freaking out, and she's screaming at Camilla to get his gun, you know, get the gun, and um, he is of course all over the car now. He's like pickaxing all over the car trying to get to them. He uh, manages to pull Camilla out of the car. So we're in a very tense, everything goes scene. Um, Yannicka does manage to bust the cop car window out with her feet. Takes quite a few punches, but she gets that out. And right before he kills Camilla, she gets off a few rounds and, um, you know, supposedly kills him. Um, so, Camilla runs over there to Ole. Ole was another one. He had come out at the same time that Yannicka was putting a bullet into gun. He had come out and fired. So that's how, between both of them, they managed to knock him off Camilla. Camilla runs over there, has her little breakdown over him because he's dead. That Ole. He, he lived just long enough to get that shot off. And Yannicka runs over there to comfort her, turns around, and Gun is gone. So, you could almost see it on her face, was like, what did I turn around for? Why didn't I just stand there and like split his head into 50 pieces? I mean, lesson not learned, obviously. So, of course, she feels her duty. I, I don't know how she would feel. I mean, it's not like she caused any of this, but for some reason she feels... I think half of her feels bitter revenge, and the other half of her feels some kind of guilt, probably survivor's guilt, you know. So she's going to take care of this shit. So she grabs gear, guns, gets on one of the cops' snowmobiles, and, you know, Camilla's like, what are you doing? And she's like, I know where he's going. He was going right back to that fucking lodge. So she gets all of the stuff, and she takes off after him after you know gunner now she gets to the motel way to the lodge way before he does because she's on a snowmobile and he's just walking like jason through the woods you know so she gets back there she does a little sentimental thing like writing all of their names in the register of the hotel she gets into a position on the, you know, she gets into a position in a chair placed in front of the door and puts the shotgun, she's got a lot more bullets this time, puts the shotgun on her lap 
and just waits. She's just sitting there waiting with, like I said, like a Sigourney Weaver look, like, I'm here, come get me, you know. And next thing you know, she snaps her eyes open, and you're like, oh, no, she fell asleep. <laughs> this can't be good. And in front of her, she sees the door wide open, and she sees no tracks on the floor. And then the camera pans out, and he's standing right behind her. Now, a lot of people would say, why didn't he kill her? Well, he didn't kill that nurse either. You know what I mean? He waited for her to wake up. I think he wants them to be awake. So that, get, that question gets excused because it's part of his M.O. We had already seen it with the nurse, so you don't have to have a question about that. So, here comes final girl and killer fight. So we have a nice, him throwing her all over the place, her getting in some good hits, him getting in some good hits. He's after her with that ice pick. She's using everything that she can. He does manage to get her down though, and right as he starts to kill her, we hear a gigantic gunshot and blood goes all over Yannicka's face and she looks on the floor and there's like a couple of fingers full fingers laying there and she looks up and Gunner is standing there with his fingers gone so it's just like this his other fingers are gone and Camilla is standing at the door with a shotgun so bam bam boom the fight is on again and there is all kinds of tussling between all three of them now so all three of them are going at it they end up falling out into the outside into the snow where he of course gets the upper hand again and just about the time that he's going to kill her Yannicka returns the favor and blows a big old hole through him. Um, no, she doesn't. She doesn't shoot him. Sorry about that. She, the top of his pickaxe, with like that much of the handle, is there on the floor where it had been broken during the fighting. She comes out the door and he's uh, probably like 20 feet away and he's on top of Camilla trying to push her eyeballs in and Yannicka, you know, throws that pickaxe and it hits the mark right in the middle of his back and comes out his front and he falls off her. Camilla jumps up. He's laying there. Yannicka walks up, grabs the shotgun off the ground, off, you know, off the floor and then goes over there to him and you know puts it right up to his face and Camilla looks at her and is like what what are you doing he's definitely dead now and <laughs> and um, Yannicka looks at her and is like I've killed him before <laughs> and so she blows his head apart and the screen fades to black and we're at the credits and that's it for Cold Prey 2. And um, like the like I said about these two movies, they were absolutely perfect. Uh, Cold Prey 2 is complete and total nods to Halloween 2. So as we're seeing, these two movies are intimately connected yet are completely unique in atmosphere. Now granted the end takes place at the lodge that last oh what ten minutes. But the atmosphere of the first one is just the shining is written all over it. And Halloween two is written all over this movie. And I find that I find that very fascinating as a cinema buff. Um 
to have two movies that are completely intimately connected be completely different in tone and atmosphere and that's these two movies that's one of the fascinating things because Cold Prey 3 which I'll talk about um, it is a continuation of that theme it is also a complete departure and a completely different theme that as a throwback and nod to another genre uh, or subgenre. So, Cold Prey 1 is The Shining, the atmosphere of The Shining, um, and this is definitely a big nod to Michael and Halloween 2, and it does them so you can see the nods but yet they are so unique and good that they're not copies they're not ripoffs the story is so unique and it has nothing to but yet you can see it tattooed all over the movie and uh, yeah so I mean if you love Halloween 2 you definitely love this and if you love The Shining mixed with with Halloween you would definitely love Cold Prey 1 so yeah Cold Prey 2 released in 2008 fantastic 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 and next I will take on part 3 and we'll finish up the trilogy um, this too is pretty easy to get a hold of um, you can find it now it does not have dubbing so you do have to you do have to do the subtitle thing with this but it's okay it's definitely worth it and you don't really have to worry about a lot of subtitles with the kind of action that's going on in this so yeah she is alive Camilla lived through it and he is definitely well, I better not say that. Well, then again, this was 2008. There's never been another sequel from this point in the timeline. Because part three is a prequel. So, yeah. Cold Prey 2, fantastic. Both of these are 9.5 out of 10. Um, which, you know, I know. So, like, if you love them so much, why don't you give them 10? As I've said before... I keep 10 for just the very, very top of the very, very top. Cold Prey 3 is a 10. Whereas other people want to call it a 5. And I'm like, yeah, whatever. But Cold Prey 2, I'll see you in the next one where we'll finish up this trilogy. Love you, miss you. Bye. And always remember and never forget, you are very unique and special person don't let anyone ever tell you different or make you feel any different you're the bomb okay i will see you in the next one thank you for taking the time to check it out let me know what you think of this trilogy or this part this entry into it if you feel like it and i will see you in the next one love you miss you bye bye